and you could introduce yourself and then uh, All right. tell me about your experiences as a Detroit cop. All right, I'm Colin Conair. I uh, was a Detroit cop for uh, about four and a half years before I left uh, to become a police officer in Gross Point Park. What is sometimes can be referred to as the Border Patrol. <laughs> that uh, borders Detroit on two sides. And uh, while I'm certainly, as a uh, father and someone who was in need of a pension and things like that, I'm glad I'm not still there. Uh, I definitely wouldn't trade the experience I had there for anything. It was certainly nothing like it. I think starting with the academy, where they definitely act like they're about to drop you into the middle of you know, the, the fall of Saigon and that uh, everybody wants everybody out there wants to kill you or potentially wants to kill you they definitely uh, get you going with a bit of paranoia but uh, definitely gave me perspective that I had not seen uh, De Detroit I don't think is really like anywhere else and uh, being a white guy, you definitely feel like you're part of a, an occupying force at times. Uh, I think there was always a, a bit of distance and a bit of a distrust in the citizenry. I'm sure that's probably worse in the current climate we have now. But uh, the job was definitely fun. Uh, for the time I was 24, didn't have any kids. Just the whole idea, I think, as, as we used to say, of chasing the bad guy. It was a lot of fun. Foot chases, occasional car chases, and things like that. Uh, things that immediately became less fun once once I became a parent. And I actually started to ask myself why I was doing it. Um, Did you ever draw your weapon or use it? Uh, I never had to fire it, but I had, definitely had to draw it and put it into people's faces. Uh, came very close, close to, to having to use it. To, to the point where you can kind of feel the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. And I had a, had a guy on a, take me on a short chase and then pull over. And he just slumped over the wheel, pretended he was sleeping. He obviously wasn't. With his hands down on the floorboards, and he locked both the doors. And uh, it just had had that spider sense. Uh, something was wrong. And I think my partner was able to reach in to the passenger window, unlock the doors, and we pulled them out. And he had a uh, he had a Glock with a 30 round extended mag, and it was right by his hand. So I think he was probably kind of making the decision whether or not to go peacefully or you know, go ahead and take a shot at me, which certainly, uh, I was pretty spooked for the rest, rest of the night after that. I was glad, glad it went like that. For the most part, uh, other than that, I mean, I've been shot at a couple times. I mean, nothing in, in close. I mean, it was just, I think, people, during a foot chase, people firing a few just to kind of slow, slow down our pursuit. I, I never felt, I never felt in danger for my life there. but. You're around it all the time that uh, something like that could happen. And certainly during my time in the DPD, there, you know, I went to my share of police funerals, and there is sort of a specter of death. I certainly I had a few few people that were uh, not not super close friends, but people I certainly knew and had worked with who were killed in line of duty, and uh, it just always gives you a weird feeling, just an unpleasant feeling in the pit of your stomach. What made it, what motivated you to become a police officer? Well, it was the only job I ever wanted wanted to do. My dad always said I would just grow out of it, and do something else. Uh, but dating back to when I was a kid and seeing uh, seeing police movies and things like that, and also I think uh, frequently being in the minority. Uh, went to a school where I was one of just a couple of white kids, and certainly wasn't one of the more the more popular kids. I don't, I don't feel like I was bullied or picked on or anything, but I definitely did, I think, did have kind of a sense of uh, social justice. You know, they always say, uh, for a lot of really uh, heavy-handed cops, they would say, oh, you were, the, you were the guy that got thrown into a locker in high school and things like that. And that certainly wasn't me, but I think I definitely had a sense of uh, 
a dislike of bullies. And I think that's, uh, you know, in theory, being the police sometimes is you get a chance to, to stick it to the bullies. Didn't you have a law background? I did. I went uh, for undergrad at Hope College and then went to, went to law school at Wayne State. Now my, my plan back then was to just be, uh, get a couple years in the DPD as I was finishing law school and then uh, go ahead and apply with the FBI, which stopped being the plan once my kids were born just because of the travel and things like that. Although it's funny. When I was, uh, I did a semester in D.C. and I had an internship with the Justice Department. One of the representatives there was from the Metro PD, the D.C. police. And his, he said, uh, once you, you know, kid, once you, once you've worked in this, you know, city department, you're ne you know, local department, you're never going to want to work for the feds. It's a completely different job. That's pretty much how that guy sounded. And I think to some extent he's right. It, it is, it is different. And, uh, I think at this point in my life, I found I found my niche as a, as a you know, maybe a hokey small town cop in our version of Mayberry. But uh, I think, given my personality and w where my life is, that's probably the best place for me. Were you living in Detroit when you were a cop? I was. Back then, there was a residency requirement, which hadn't yet been found to be unconstitutional, so you had to live in the city. And I had a very a very pleasant experience there. I lived. Uh, Indian Village, which is a historic district, and I rented a carriage house apartment above a above a garage, and never really had any problems uh, living there. I think it was a good place to go. Of course, the only drawback is if you if I wanted to go to a grocery store or go to a restaurant where we weren't ordering through a bulletproof shield, I had to drive outside of the city limits. Which, uh, as we experienced today at breakfast, those are few and far between to find a place where you could actually go in and sit down. Uh, inside the city limits, go in and sit down at a, at a table at a restaurant and have table services uh, can be pretty rare. And that's that's another thing that I, I don't. I mean, I'm sure there are other inner cities that are like that, but it's uh, an area where I think Detroit is really it's so prevalent all over the city, and it's it's a real rarity to find a place. And they, they're usually on the absolute outskirts where you can sit down. Is that one of the reasons, among many, that you moved to Gross Point Park? Uh, yeah, I think that there was a, a certain amount of that. I, I, residency had was gone by then, so I could have I could have stayed. Some of it was uh, more just for for better pay, better benefits, and the long run. And I, you know, with the we didn't know there was the financial crisis looming, but uh, the fact that. Uh, be nice to, to have a pension still there when I did retire, which is definitely uh, definitely not always the case. There are some you know, they keep chipping away even at some of the Detroit retirees, and I, I certainly feel uh, as though after the financial crisis, a lot of the public sector employees are blamed. You would think that we were the ones that ran the economy off a cliff. Uh, the way that there was the the sentiment and the public support to just go ahead and uh, cut pensions. We're in a climate now, more than ever, where everyone, I mean, everyone is filming us on every traffic stop, on every interaction. We've got, you know, a set of people with their camera phones out filming us. And I, I think there's a feeling institutionally and amongst us police officers uh, individually that uh, anything filming us is filming us to make us look bad or will be attempted to be edited to make us look bad or make us look heavy handed. Uh, I am in favor of being on, on film, I think, uh, for the most part, uh, you know, if, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, it's not gonna do anything but exonerate us. I mean, our department, uh, having uh, the body mics, we don't have the body cameras yet, but the body mics and the scout car cameras, those have saved us from more complaints, uh, saved us from more trouble than they've caused. So, uh, that would be my stance on it, but I think uh, there's just this, that you do kind of get a siege mentality amongst the departments that, well, nothing good can, they don't, they don't have to let you come in and film, so why, you know, why would they, because only bad things can happen, and I think there's a feeling that no one's making a, uh, 
a documentary talking about what a good job we're doing. Last question, Colin, because I see we're pulling up to my home mm -hmm. right over there. How have how has the the attacks on police affected your life? Well, it's uh, as we mentioned earlier. I stopped. I used to wear my uniform to work just for or wear, wear at home for simplicity's sake, and then ride my bike to work because I live very close to the station. And now I don't do that. I I change uh, in the locker room, and just this. I never used to worry about making myself a target of opportunity, but after, especially after the Dallas attacks, it just it was so. So random, and people taking sh sh shots at someone just because they were police officers. So I thought that I wasn't gonna wasn't gonna tempt fate. I mean, I'm probably fine. I live in a very safe community, but then again, this was you know those Dallas ones happened in this downtown Dallas. So uh, and there have been other ones. You just, you just never know. And that was something I never really thought of before that that would uh, that would make me an additional target. I guess it's. It shouldn't be something new I've thought of, but it's the fact that it's almost been normalized by the amount of uh, tax on officers over the summer. So that definitely put a night, put a worry in my head that wasn't there before.